So a lot of you that follow the channel that also do 3D printing probably know that once you get your first personal 3D printer, you're going to quickly want to get your second personal 3D printer and so on and so forth. And quickly you're going to outgrow the original space that you put your printer in. And that is exactly what happened to me along with a few other factors that I'll explain in a second. So in this little mini series and video, I'm going to build the ultimate 3D printing enclosure set. My guess is if you clicked on this video, you're somewhat interested in 3D printing. And if you are, I have some really great news for you. My best friend Will and I just launched our 3D printing podcast a few weeks ago. We now have two episodes out and live. So if you guys are interested in following along on our podcast journey, the podcast is available on YouTube, on a playlist on my channel, as well as Spotify and many of the other popular podcast hosting sites. We're going to be talking all things 3D printing all the way from the very basic to the most cutting edge technology in the industry. So make sure to go to check that out if you're interested in following along. So my most recent 3D printing related video on the channel is an unboxing and setup video of my newest 3D printer that I added to my home fleet. It is a Creality CR10S Pro V2 that I purchased on Amazon Prime Day for $200 off. And when I got that printer and set it up, I quickly realized that my little nook here that I do all my 3D printing in in my home office upstairs is quickly becoming too small and I'm running out of space. And along with a few other factors related to the materials that I'm gonna print with, I realized quickly that I should probably move these printers into a larger space where they can also be enclosed. Now without getting into too much detail because it's really a topic for a whole nother video, basically when you start printing with higher grade materials, some of the materials can emit some pretty gnarly fumes, odors, and particulates. So it's definitely not healthy for you to breathe that for the printer to be in a space where you're either sleeping or working in or hanging out in. And then on top of that, those same higher grade materials often require the printer to be in an enclosed space so that it's, an, it's a more consistent printing environment so you don't have issues with warping and cracking with the materials. So that really prompted me to change my space where I 3D print now. I'm gonna be moving the printers into my garage. And as I said earlier, I'm gonna be building the ultimate printer enclosure setup. So this is my current 3D printing space in this little nook of my home office and as you can see the desk that my first printer is on is pretty small and there's definitely not enough room for me to add a second printer on. I was going to actually have to build an extension off of this desk to even fit the second Creality printer that I bought. So when I was going to have to do that it really made me question whether or not to leave the printers here or actually move them to a new space and really build them out to bring the capabilities of my printing setup uh, to a much higher level. And my home office here is actually on the second floor of my house and so during the day this room heats up uh, quite a bit because you're on the second floor, hot air obviously rises. And I don't know if I'm making this up in my head or not, but when I run this printer with the heated bed and everything, it definitely feels like this room gets even warmer. So I could only imagine it probably getting even warmer, adding another printer here, running them both at the same time. So those were a bunch of different reasons that prompted me to move these guys. So before I bring you guys down to the garage and I start assembling and putting together this ultimate enclosure setup, I wanna go over six main features that I think are really important for a 3D printer enclosure based on my experience with 3D printing so far. Okay, so here's a quick little list of six main feature points that I think are really crucial to making a 3D printer enclosure setup safe, reliable, and really usable. So the first being, obviously, you gotta have a consistent environment by enclosing the printers with some kind of barrier. You gotta keep drafts out from either air conditioning or an open window. You want the environment and the temperature that you're printing in to be consistent, so with certain materials, they're less likely to warp and or crack due to uneven cooling while you're printing. The second point being you want to have some kind of ventilation and or filtration with your enclosure setup. Certain materials emit some pretty gnarly fumes, odors, and particulates. You want to be able to vent or filter the air coming from the space where your 3D printers are in. The best thing is if you can vent it to the outside, do that. Otherwise, try and filter it into some kind of charcoal or HEPA filter. The third point being a fire or smoke detection system. So printers are obviously uh, a lot of a computer system with a lot of electronics and you're dealing with a lot of heating elements. Um, the chances of this happening are very low, but you also you always want to be able to have a fire or smoke detection system that can alert you if something has gone seriously wrong with your printer setup. 
Uh, the fourth point being a video camera monitoring system. This is a really nice feature to have if you have a long print going while um, that you have to leave your house or apartment. Um, or if you have a print that has to go through the night, um, you want to be able to monitor the feed of your printer uh, live so that you can see how well it's doing. If the print's failing or something doesn't look right, you can go and stop the print. And then the fourth point being lighting. You want to have adequate lighting in your enclosure setup so that when you're tuning your printer, when you're setting up a print and making sure that your bed leveling is right and your first layer is going down well, you want to make sure you can see what you're doing, so adequate lighting. And the last point being storage. You have a lot of stuff that, go, that goes along with 3D printers, like tools to help you tune and work on the printer. And then, of course, you have all your materials. So you want to have adequate storage space as well. So these are the six main points that I'm going to shoot for when building my enclosure setup. Okay, so first step down in the garage here is to get these shelves assembled. So we got our shelving pieces here with the nice white laminate on the top surface. And then we have all of our... Uh, posts and beams there. Basically the shelf is going to look exactly like this one when it's assembled except this one is 18 inches deep this one is 24 inches deep and I'll get into the details of the ideal dimensions you want for a shelving system um, for most 3D printers. Uh, so this is what it'll look like so now I'm going to spend the time and get this all assembled and get the shelves spaced accordingly so that we have enough height to account for the printers and all of the storage space we need. Okay so I got the shelf all assembled and put in place. I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's going to have a lot of great storage space and usability for running the printers. Obviously the big section up here is for putting the two printers and then the two lower shelves are for storing uh, various accessories, tools, and material um, to support the printers as well. I've already got my dry filament storage box down below there so I'm probably going to bring my tools down here that are specific to the printers although I have a whole, this is my automotive tool set here so I'll have a whole other tool set specifically for the printers down below or I might even use the pegboard on my workbench just to the right of the printers. Excuse the mess here, these are all the Corvette parts that are waiting to go back on the car. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with the shelf. It went together pretty easily um, and it doesn't stick too far out from the wall, which is nice because I obviously have to park my car here still. So that'll still allow me to kind of squeeze in between the car to get to the printers um, to check on them and to start them and do all the things like that. So I think the next step is I'm going to grab the printers from upstairs and I'm going to put them down here, rough out the layout, and we'll see how everything looks. Okay, so I got both printers brought down into the garage here into the soon-to-be enclosed printing space just to kind of rough it out and see how everything looks. Um, for the most part, it looks awesome. Uh, the one drawback is because this is a 24-inch deep uh, shelf, I'm going to have to extend the enclosure walls off the back and off and off the front a little bit um, so that when the build plate is at maximum and minimum Y, uh, so forward to backward, the it doesn't ram the cable and kink the cable um, or ram the plate into the wall or the front part of the enclosure. So that's something I knew going into this. I was going to get a 30 inch deep shelf, but it was going to stick out way too far and they're also really hard to find. Common sizes are 18, 24 and 36 so um, so this is the one that I ended up with the other thing that I'm gonna have to do is the side-to-side -side spacing so this is a 48 inch uh, long shelf uh, the side-to-side -side spacing is pretty good I could probably get away with it in its current form um, but it is a little bit tight with the, the ribbon cable on my CR 10s Pro V2 over there um, so what I'm gonna do is the common thing that with people do with the CR 10 printers is I'm gonna raise the actual printer up on the four feet and then I'm gonna mount the control box underneath the printer and then the, the the filament will get mounted like how that one is to the top and then it'll feed down and around so that way it'll give me a little more spacing side to side but overall I'm super stoked with the initial results of how this is turning out and um, you know it's definitely a little bit of a project here and I um, can't do this all in one day it took me a while to uh, organize the garage get everything situated put together the shelf and then start bringing stuff down here so I'm gonna definitely split this video up into a two part series. The next video in the mini series with building this ultimate 3D printing enclosure is obviously going to be building the enclosure part of it, uh, doing the plexiglass front panels, and then adding all the accessories like that I was talking about earlier in this video.
So thank you all so much for watching and tuning into the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and possibly learned a little something during the process of me uh, doing the initial setup of my ultimate 3D printing enclosure setup. Uh, so if you guys have any comments or questions about my enclosure setup or soon to be enclosure setup, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And in addition, if you already have a really cool 3D printing setup of your own and you have some things that you've incorporated into your setup that I haven't really mentioned in this video, please leave me a comment below and I'd be really curious to see what you guys have done that I haven't thought of and I might consider adding that in uh, when I do the second part in this little mini series when I finish out building this ultimate 3D printing setup. Basically this in 3D printing enclosure will really allow me to print some a lot better higher grade materials and then not have to obviously worry about a health hazard from the fumes, particulates, stuff like that and it also keep my house a little bit uh, cooler and quieter as well even though these printers are already pretty quiet. So thank you guys all so much again for watching. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And other than that, I will see you guys in the next one.